Hello everyone, I'm Darwin from Jingstar. Today I will make an unboxing video of our digital gateway. The model number is MTG1000. Uh, basically, Jingstar digital gateway is used for IPO connection, especially for the E1 to IPO connection. So you can use our digital gateway to connect with SIP servers or SIP application. And then you can use E1 cable to connect with your service provider and transfer E1 to IP. As you can see here, this is package of MTG1000. So let's open it up and find out what's inside. First, you have two accessory box here, one small and one big. And next, of course, our MTG1000. So I will start with these two box here. First, you have two power supply cables. And next, you have two network cable. And this one is console cable. And this one is E1 cable, which is RJ48 cable. And this one is ground, ground wire, is used for grounding lug. And this one is BNC adapter, is not included in the default accessories, but you can buy it according to your request. As you can see here, it's white. Uh, RX is means receive data and TX is means transfer data. So one side is 120 ohms and another side is 75 ohms. And here is a screw and a racket to allow you put a gateway on the rack. Because our MTG1000 is rack mountable device, so you can put this little bracket on each side and screw them with the rack. So that's all done with the accessory box. And please remember, once you receive the package, please check all the parts and make sure everything is complete. So now, let's move on to the MTG1000. I will introduce some interface on it. Uh, this is MTG1000. This is front side. So if you put on the rack, it will show like this. These are two fans. The heat will come out from here. And here is a statue LED. The one on the left side is for E1 and T1 statue, and the one on the right side is for network statue. This one is console port. You can use console cable to log in the website. And this one is USB port. And this one is power statue light. Uh, as you can see here, you can directly know if the device is running or it had a problem with power supply. So it's all done with the front side. Let's move on to the back side. The first thing you can see here is this tag. It indicates the MAC address and the series number of this device. Please leave this tag on the device in case one day you will need uh, for technical assistance. And these are two power supply, uh, power one and power zero. Uh, both of them can work. If one of them was fair, the another one will keep the device working. And here is the interface for grounding lug. And you can see here, you have four E1 or T1 port. It starts from zero, so it's zero, one, two, three. You can use E1 cable to connect with your service provider. And here you have two GE ports, G0 and G1. G0 is for management. You can see later in this video how we will access to the GUI through this port. And the GE1 port is for service. Some data must be sent and received by this port. And here you need to know, the G0 port is only for the management and maintenance and the interaction of the voice and the signaling is complete through the GE1 port. And here you have a reset button. You can push this button for 3 seconds and the device will come back to the default setting. Uh, that's all for the unboxing. If you want to know more about MTG, you can read our user manual or go to our website to download more documents or get a technical support. Now I will show you how to access the GUI to the MTG1000. As you can see here, it's our MTG1000 and a PC. If you want to access the GUI and configure our MTG1000, firstly you need to power on the MTG1000 and then you need to use the network cable to connect your PC and this cable directly connects to the GE0 port. 
after connect your PC to the G0 port, you need to change the IP address of your PC. And please make sure the IP address of your PC and the IP address of the GE0 port are in the same network segment. After changing the IP address of your PC, you can access the GUI through the IP address of the GE0 port. Here you need to know the default IP address of the GE0 and GE1 are different. The default IP address of the GE0 is 192.168.11.1 and default IP address of the GE1 is 192.168.1.111. Because practical needs, you need to change the IP address of the device into your current network environment. So you can access the GUI and change the IP address of the G0 and G1 and then save it, wait the device to restart. Just now we introduced the accessory and physical interface of the device. Also how to access the GUI and change the IP address. Now we will access our device through the IP address of the GE1 port. And the default username and password is admin and admin. Enter them and you can log into our system. You can see that this is the original login state and the entire system environment and another parameters has not been configured. After the device is connected, you must configure the device according to the remote setting, especially for the parameters of the E1 and you can configure it according to our user menu. As you can see, there is a quick configuration flow in the user menu. Firstly, you need to configure the PRI trunk. Secondly, you need to configure PNSTN group. And then you need to configure the SIP trunk. SIP trunk can connect to the remote SIP server or IPPBX. And you have to set up a code routing and number manipulation. Therefore, you can complete the entire configuration process. OK, now you can see that our configuration website has various parameters to configure. First, you have to configure the E1 parameters. And you can see there are four E1 ports. You can click modify to configure parameters and you also need to set up clock source. It depends on whether you use a local clock or, or a remote clock. After configuring the E1 parameters, you need to configure the PRI trunk. Because most enterprise users use PRI trunk, therefore you need to configure the PRI trunk according to the remote parameters. Then you need to configure the SIP trunk. After the configuration is completed, you can connect to the remote SIP server or IPPBX. Then you need to configure the call routing in these two directions. IP to the PNSTN and PNSTN to the IP. PNSTN to IP is the route from E1 to IP. And IP to PNSTN is the route from IP to E1. This is a simple quick setup guide. If you need more detailed configuration instruction or need to connect to a specific device, you can read our user menu or contact our technique support. If you want to mo know more about our products, you can visit our website, www.dingstar.com. Thank you for watching this video. This is Dai Yu from Dingstar. See you next time. Bye.